Okay, so now we know what we do in the arena, where the scoring points are. It's time to pick our team. Can't wait. Now, unusually, Martin, this is a bit different to a game like Vanguard, where you have your own warband, or Dreadball, where you have a team. Now, we, what we are is we are fantastic, famous coaches. We travel around the galaxy in a space shuttle with our entourage and fans. We get to an arena, and then what we actually do then is when we get to the arena, we pick our players. So here, we've got the six players, or giants, um, from the core game. And what we do in the kind of standard game, they all line up here, waiting to be chosen. So it's a bit like when you're in the school playground and you want to choose your favorites, you put them on your team. So it's, the technical term, is drafting. Are there any other ways to draft? Do you want to get into that now, or is that something for a later video? Well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll draft our team now. We'll show you how the simple mechanic works, and then I'll talk about what would happen if okay. you want to have a little bit more advanced drafting. Yes, yeah, sounds good. So I'm the home player. I get to go first. So what you do is you look at these, and you think, okay, well, which sort of character do I want to play? And it's so, all very different. And so just a quick question. So when you're, when you're picking your, your three, are you aiming for kind of individuals or would you have a kind of synergy in mind or? I think it's totally up to the coach. I mean, personally, I just choose the ones I like the most individually, but I know in the past you've looked at ones that are synergetic. Synergistic. Synergistic, there we go. Uh, and you can look how their abilities might combine or even how their overdrive might combine. Or something so you could even well. have a bit of both. So you could have maybe two that synergize and one like a lone hero yeah. almost who can do stuff on his own. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's a really good way. So there's lots of different tactics. And when we talk about the advanced kind of drafting, you'll see there's even more mental mind games. Fantastic. That go as well. So I'll be the first player. Now, as you know, Martin, I like slightly weird, quirky characters. <laughs> so I'm going to pick Cynic Docker, the space jellyfish, because they have a really good move where they can mind control characters. So I basically just take it, put it on my side, and now I've chosen that character. Now it's up to you. Well, as you, as you know, I quite like to play a kind of aggressive in your face characters. So, you know, there's only, there's a couple that might fit that, but yep. there is one that absolutely stands out and that is Caradon the shark, shark face. So he'll be my first pick. Okay. Hmm. Now you've picked Caradon, who's very, very good at hitting, quite strong, quite fast as well. So I think I want something a bit more defensive this time. So I'm gonna go for Dozer the Terraton, who is able to hide in her shell when things get a bit too scary. <laughs> Very you, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm thinking um, maybe to help um, pull and push characters in, in the way, maybe set up Caradon for some, some tasty slams. I'll take the spawn because he can pull people out of position and maybe maybe set those up for in the game. Yeah, particularly in this mode, actually, Positioning and, and being able to move other players around is really key because if they're if you know if I'm stood in one of these scoring zones and you want to get me out, then actually pulling is a really great way to get me that, out. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah, the scoring zone thing. Obviously, that's you're just important. thinking about hitting me. Really. That's <laughs> fine. Um, okay. Well, I, I've got quite a good defensive option here. I think I want someone who's going to be a guaranteed hitter, a bit, a bit tougher as well. So I think I will finally go for Brank Reborn. Okay, so as I was saying on the on the preamble, I think these two work quite well uh, from a, a synergy point of view. Yeah. And to I think to round that off, I think uh, Scarathon works quite well in that as well because he is very good from range. Yeah. So he can potentially put wounds on ranged uh, from range, uh, which sets up Caradon to do his overdrive ability, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. So actually, so in the core game, uh, Scarathon is the only one with a ranged attack. So that's quite a good little tactic there. I think I've got a bit of a mixture there. I've got, yeah. I've got some hard hitting, some movement shenanigans, and also some range attack. Yeah. Okay, so now we've drafted our team. If you were playing sort of in a league or in a, in a tournament, you would probably do the advanced drafting. So that's a bit more uh, tactical, I guess. What would happen is you would line up your six characters here. Oh, sorry, I would line up my six characters here that I want to play. And you would line up your six here. And then what we do is we actually take it in turns to choose our three players from our own lineup. But what would happen is, if we had the same player, for example, I had Brank and you had Brank, if I select Brank first, it means that you can't select them. So it's almost like that mental mind games where you're looking at their selection and thinking, 
okay, what sort of game are they going to play? And then trying to get first blood by taking away some of their favourite characters. And, and I guess that also helps promote not just playing with the same three all the time, to have a bit of a mixture of, of different uh, giants. So you, if you do suffer that when you're drafting, that you, you know, you're able to play the game with not just your favourite three, but maybe the secondary. Yeah, and it also, I think one of the key things about Overdrive actually means that every single you know, new giant, new player that we release can be used in your team. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, I don't know if you know Martin, but I like goblins. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> so obviously when a new goblin release comes out, I'm really excited. When a dwarf comes out, I spit on the floor. <laughs> so the great thing about when we release new players for Overdrive is you can immediately sort of add them into your roster potentially and start using them. So all releases are kind of usable by everyone. And I noticed there aren't actually any goblins on the, uh, are you upset about that? Not yet. Okay. Not There's yet. plenty of time. <laughs> okay, so now we've drafted our team, let's get set up and start slamming. So we've selected our teams now and it's time to start setting up so we can get stuck in. So you've playing. selected your team, I've yep. selected the winning team. Sure, let's okay. go with that. Um, so what happens is uh, I set up all my players first and what I can do is I can put them in any of the scoring zones on my side. Now obviously, in the first rush, none of the scoring zones are active. We're just all about getting kind of stuck in, kind of maneuvering our and positioning ourselves to get ready for the second rush when one of these will become active. Mm -hmm. So depending on what, you, what sort of player you are, you might want to be defensive and sort of hold them back to begin with, or you might want to get sort of in your face and start playing. So I set up on mine first. So Cynic Docker is quite weak. So I'm gonna keep them at the back here. Uh, Doze is pretty tough, but she's slow. She's only got a move of four. I'm sort of going to put her here. And then finally, I've got Brank. Now, Brank is a bit of a beast. Uh, he's quite tough, good at slamming, uh, and also can reduce the amount of wounds he takes. So I'm not too worried about him. So I'm going to put him there. So once I've set up mine, you sort of have a little bit of advantage because you can see how I've positioned myself and you can respond to that. Okay, so I know these two are tough as nails, so I'm thinking maybe I should go with Caradon over here to try and hunt down your, your jellyfish. Yep. Um, I've got the spawn, who I'm going to put here. To hopefully move you around a little bit. Yep. And then I've got Scarathon over here. So I can start doing some ranged attacks. Okay. So now we're all set up. We kind of know what's within the arena. We know how to score. Uh, one thing as well, actually talking about scoring is, now I've talked about these active scoring zones. So for those, you'll get a point or you'll get a bonus point if you're stood like that in the scoring zone. Uh, so you can potentially get two points if you're stood here like that. Um, what you can also do is you can also score points by knocking out your opposition. And that's an immediate score. Mm -hmm. So these are at the end of the rush. But if I manage to knock you out, that's an immediate one point to mm -hmm. me. So for example, because this is definitely what's going to happen, you know, Brank would come over here, slam carried onto oblivion, and then I'd get a point. And that sure. would come ding ding to me like that. So there are two, in this mode of play, there are two different ways to score. You can either secure the active scoring zones, like kind of like King of the Hill, I guess, if you're playing a video game, or you can punch people and take them out, or mm -hmm. use the range to take. So there are two different ways to score, so that's worth bearing in mind when you're starting to play. So now we're all set up. I think we're ready to start moving around and slamming and doing all that. 